very happy birthday, Lida. Thank you, Martin. Thank you very much. Party secretary and Hitler's chief assistant. When are we going to leave Berlin? You've decided I'm leaving then. Russian guns leave then. Russian. A very happy birthday, Lida. Thank you. Thank you, Josef. Are we going to stay in Berlin, Lida? Minister of Enlightenment and Propaganda and one of Hitler's oldest friends. I think we've reached a point where each man must choose for himself. Happy birthday, Lida. Thank you, Hermann. Thank you. When do we leave Berlin, Adolf? We? Deputy leader and head of the Air Force. Leave Berlin? Where? How do you suggest we get out? I will fly you myself. Do you mean you can still find a plane? Happy birthday, leader. Thank you, Heinrich. My beloved Heinrich. Minister of the Interior and head of the SS. Are you going to leave Berlin, leader? I don't know. I haven't made up my mind. What do you think? I don't think, leader. I obey. A very, very happy birthday, darling. Thank you, my dear. Very much. We are staying in Berlin, aren't we, Addy? Hitler's mistress for many years. Can't you hear the guns? Russian guns? I hear nothing but your voice, pretty darling. remains today of Adolf Hitler's chancellery, where the event you have just witnessed took place, is this small mound of earth. No plaque, no words, no epitaph to his Nazi Germany have been left to remind us that 60 feet below here, there existed a giant basement, never intended to be a military headquarters, but which had become by April the 20th, 1945, with its one telephone line to reality, the only remaining heartbeat of Hitler's Third Reich. One of us has got to tell him. Nobody need tell him anything. If he'll leave Berlin and take command in the south, we can keep the war going at least another year. How can we be sure that he will move? By making him think it's his own idea. Eva. Something extraordinary is happening, isn't it? Something quite extraordinary. I can feel it in my blood. But why are you so calm? The Russians are coming, didn't you know? All you have to do is accept things. Good morning, gentlemen. Good morning, Good morning, Good morning leader. leader. What is the latest military situation? Why do you always play that same record, E.B.? Is there anyone here? Yes, but why always the same side? It makes him laugh. Actually, actually, it irritates him. He pretends that it doesn't, and so he laughs. I like to see him laugh. Why does it irritate him? Have you ever seen the leader smoking, Lisa? <laughs> Apart from the Russian threat to Berlin itself, the main danger is of the Western Allies splitting Germany in two. And not even you, leader, can be in two places at once. True. Very true. Not even I. However, Without realizing it, Keitel, you have solved the whole problem. Really? Have I? Oh. Well, we split Germany in two before the enemy does. We set up a northern command and a southern command and attack them on both flanks. 
May I ask, leader, who is to command the north and who the south? I suspect you'd rather like the south yourself, wouldn't you, Yodel? Hey, you and Kaito. I must say you make a very good double act, my yes man and my no man. On the other hand, I may take command of the south myself. I'm not sure. I haven't yet made up my mind as for the north. That is less important. Albert has already blown up all the bridges and factories and anything else worth having, haven't you, Albert? It's uh, coming along, Lido, coming along. Good, let's see then. Any volunteers for the North? If you wish it, Lido, I shall be honored to take command of the North. Oh, my dear Heinrich, you're far too busy with the Jews. The extermination program must be completed. How is it going, by the way? As you know, Lido, most of our work was completed last year, very satisfactorily. Naturally, as the camps continue to close, we have our share of transport difficulties. Oh. Hundreds are still dying, of course. Good, good. Well then, let's see. Admiral Turnitz. Yeah? Well, you seem to be rather short of work. What with us not having a navy, you take command of the North, will you? Me? Yes, you. Any objections? No, no of course not. I'm deeply honored leader. Uh, but, uh... But, uh, what? Well, I shall need, uh, air support. How much air support can I have? Well, let's ask the head of the Air Force, shall we? Hammond? How much air support can you give Dennis Hammond? Uh, <coughs> air support, you know, air support. Support by airplanes, those things with wings and a funny thing at the front that goes round and round, what's it called? A propeller. They come in quite handy in a war, remember? I would appreciate if you would not speak to me like that in public at all. Adolf, don't you dare ever call me Adolf ever again! I am the leader, you are the head of the Air Force! And if you would be if I had an Air Force? What's it gone? What have you done with 4,000 planes? Have you sold them? I wouldn't put it past you. Who have you sold them to? The Allies or the Jews? Stay here and be spoken to like. Stay where you are! All right, have you shot? You went cup and a pig and throw your bodies to the poor, starving Jews if they can overcome their mistakes for pot! We wouldn't be in this mess now if it wasn't for you! You have betrayed the party! You have betrayed Germany! You have betrayed me! If it wasn't for you, we'd have won this war already! If it wasn't for me! <laughs> Thank you, gentlemen. That will be all. Before you go, Lido, may I ask a question? Of course, my dear chap. Do you intend to leave Berlin, and if so, when? Of course, you went at the uh, reception, were you? No. Well, I have already pronounced on that. And since I don't like to repeat myself, let me see. Goering, tell you my decision about leaving Berlin. Please! Tell him, tell him, tell him! The leader has made up his mind not to make his mind up. I wonder, Xander, whether any country in the world has as leader of its air force a man who cries. Hmm? Who actually cries in the presence of his leader. Linz. Linz. The artistic capital of the world. Linz. You shall exist. You do exist. I have fathered you. I was born just over the hill, my children. I struggled in the town you used to be. I failed in the town you used to be. At least men thought so. But now I come back, not only as leader, but as artist. Leader. Leader? Now go away, Martin. I want to talk to you about Goering. Hmm? But that's Goering's palace, sir. That is Herman's palace. Will you please listen, Leader? Goering is disloyal. If he stays, you will lose the war. And there will be no limps. And disloyalty is infectious. Please go away, Martin. I heard what the Leader said. Go away. Go on. Get out. You have no soul. He said, he said, get out. Very well. But you do the leader no service, madam. None at all. I love Hermann Goering. Don't you understand? 
Aren't you capable of love? Don't you know what love means? Love and loyalty can be awkward companions. Which do you want? Heights, are we going to die? Who knows? If he doesn't. Yeah. Dr. Gapart, leader. Oh, come in, come in. Nice to see you. Thank you, Lido. The most kind. Not at all. Not at all. Uh, you did say doctor, didn't you? Probably the most highly qualified doctor in the Reich. Excuse me, that may sound a little vain. Not at all, not at all. Modesty is a debilitating condition. Listen, I have a question to ask you. But first, before I do so, Take a look at this model. It is a model of the city of Linz, which I shall build when the war is won. Now, look, there is a hospital. Would you, as a professional man, put it anywhere else? Oh, um, oh no, Lita, no. No, no, it's perfectly positioned. Good, good. I always believe in uh, taking the advice of professional men. What was the other question you wanted to ask me, Lita? I know that I have no idea who you are. Who are you? Dr. Carl Gebhardt. Heinrich Himmler's physician. Oh, yes, yes, of course, yes. How is my beloved Heinrich? Well, I'm sorry to tell you that his car has broken down, but apart from that, he's in excellent health. He has asked me to come in his place to offer you the services of his personal escort battalion. Why? To conduct you to safety out of Berlin. Are you mad? I don't think so. Get out! Um, there is one other thing I want to ask you, Leader. It really is most important. What? Uh, well, you realize, Leader, that how closely involved I have become in experiments being conducted on the Jewish creatures. Uh, would you like to see some photographs? No, no. Um, I take your word for it, Doctor. Um, Gebhardt. Do, do you wish extra facilities? Oh, no, no, no. No, not at all. I have all the facilities I need. No, I, I just want to be head of the Red Cross. Head of the what? Of the Red Cross. Can you appoint me head of the Red Cross? Are you mad? I don't think so. I just want to be head of the Red Cross. You asked me if I could. I can make you anything I choose, Doctor. Gebhardt. Why do you keep repeating yourself? I know that! I can't stand a man who keeps repeating himself! Now, why exactly do you wish to be head of the Red Cross, Gabe Hart? Well, you will know better than I, leader, how many German soldiers are injured and maimed. Yes, yes, for the fatherland. Remember that, Gabe Hart, for the fatherland. Their injuries are their glory, but as a doctor, I feel that I must do for them what I can. Now, my staff and I have been conducting skin grafting experiments on Jews, and I would like you to look at these photographs. No, no, no need, Gebhardt. Um, 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 I take your word for it. Well, I don't want to brag, Lida, but we have now reached the point where we can flay an entire Jewish corpse and graft the resulting samples onto up to two dozen other living Jews with a 90% success ratio. Now, think what I could do as head of the Red Cross, for our disfigured heroes who need such treatment. Yeah. Will it work on human beings? I believe so. I do believe so. Mm. In some ways, they are, they're quite like us, Lita. Yes, well, all right. Yes, I appoint you head of the Red Cross, Doctor. Um, oh, I am deeply honored, Leader. I'm deeply honored. Mm. Oh. oh! I see you. I see you've got one of my lamps. I presume mm. right, Leader Himmler gave it to you. Oh, yes. Oh, oh I see. Yes. Oh, I, what, what do you know about it? I made several to his orders. They've come out quite beautifully, don't you think? Who would ever have thought that Jewish skin could turn out so elegant? Rather proves my point, don't you think? 
Okay, I appoint you head of the Red Cross, Dr. Gabbard. I will confirm it in writing. Thank you. Thank you, leader. My deepest thanks, leader. My deepest thanks. Don't you find it rather warm in that dress? Personally, I find it rather warm down here. Yes, darling. Baby, say again. Going to wake up Borman, are you? Borman never sleeps. I have a feeling he never will. I really think they should have invaded through the Balkans. That's what I'd have done if I'd been Churchill. I'm ready, darling. My own suspicion is that Roosevelt overruled him. Oh, come to bed, Eddie. I'm sure Roosevelt overruled him. My God, if only we'd been allies, me and Churchill, we'd have smashed Russia into pieces. He'd have helped me. What a pity. What a great, great pity. Addy. Hmm? I want you to kiss me. May I? My scars. May I? My scars for you. May I? My scars for you, and I thought you might leave me. Please? I aimed at my heart. I meant it to hit because I thought you'd left me. I have very little personal property, Mady. What I have, your scars are for me my most precious possessions. They are my sorrow and my joy. Precious, Mady. Precious. Precious baby. Oh, I love you. Everything's so lovely. That was lovely. It's been so long since been so busy since. Mm, lovely. I'll tell you one thing I'd like. Hmm. Hmm. Anything you like, Maida. Haven't called me Maida for a long time. So today. Anything you like, my love. <laughs> my love. Like that, my love. It's nice. What is it you want? Take your uniform off. I want you to come to me with your uniform off. It's terribly uncomfortable. Mm. You shouldn't sleep with your uniform on all the time. Another night, my dear. Doesn't matter. We have so many years of nights ahead of us.
wanted me to take my my clothes off. She doesn't know. She doesn't understand. She doesn't understand. I slept in my clothes for years. Had to. Had to. In the sewers. With rats. Bread, bread, fresh bread. Take my clothes off. Down here. No idea. No idea. Bread, fresh bread. I'd have a roll. No, 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 I think of it. I, I'm hungry. I'd have to. Let's see your money first, young man. And cakes. I like cakes. Have you any cakes? I said, let's see your money. I haven't got any money. No money? And you want cakes as well as bread? Look, look at all these people here. Look at that. They're sleeping in sores. They're human beings, not rats, and they have to sleep in sores. Are they rats? Because they have to sleep in sores because they're poor. Rats get bread without money. That's why I hate rats. That's why I shall create a revolution leading to total victory, total power for the German race. No one will be poor. Every German household will have a foreign servant. And cakes for everyone. And no foreign rats to eat them. All rats are foreign. <laughs> Come over here and I'll do you a favor. I haven't got any money. No, but you got away with you. You're not a man, but you got away with you. I'll settle for a bite of that roll. No, come over here, sweetie. I like the look of you. You look clean for a start. Not many clean young men down here, sweetie. Ready, Don't you see the rats? What's that noise? Just guns. Guns? Russian guns. <laughs> They're waiting for you in the conference room, Nita. Why is China? Forgive me, gentlemen. I didn't mean to raise my voice. Extremely bad manners, quite apart from exhausting me. Now, please, may I ask, where is General Steiner? Has he come into combat with the Russian armies that are so pathetically besieging Berlin? I believe I asked a question. Where is General Steiner and his army? Krebs. He's close, Vita. Look on the map, he's just about there. Unfortunately, the result is that the Russians have moved in behind Steiner's army, so it is completely isolated. The Russians will destroy Steiner's army because it is totally trapped. The Russians are even now in the city of Berlin. Keitel. Who is your mad friend? Yodel, General Yodel. Uh, what makes you so different? All you've ever done is to tell me what you think I want to hear. Well, I tell you what I want to hear now. I want to hear that everyone is having a good time doing exactly what they like. If anyone wants to go, they can go. If anyone wishes to leave Germany, they can go. If anyone wishes to desert the gods themselves, they may go. And if you don't want to be us, so they do I want to hear that Berlin has fallen. 
and that the victorious Russians are parading Adolf Hitler through the streets in a cage like the absurd performing monkey that he is! I must go to him. Stay where you are. Please be dignified. I have made up my mind to stay in Berlin. Uh, leader. And if necessary, to die in Berlin. What is to happen to the rest of Germany? Do you wish someone to negotiate? If it comes to negotiations, better get Goering to do it. He was always better at negotiating than I am. Did he mean it? I mean, about Goering negotiating with the Allies. I don't know. All I do know is that he told me and Keitel to go south, and whether he meant it or not, that's good enough for me. I take it you agree. I tried counting those steps faster than I can. But I don't know what to do. Shall I tell Goering to negotiate with the Allies or not? Shall I go and tell Goering that the leader wants him to negotiate? I don't know. I'm glad I don't have that decision to make. He didn't mention me, which means I'm going to die here. You're glad because you might die. He's the leader of the nation. I serve the nation. It is my duty to serve the nation. I very much hope that I die before I have to question that concept of duty. May I make a request, leader? Better, of course. I ask permission to bring my children down here into the bunker so that we can all die with you. I'm afraid I must refuse permission. You must do no such thing, Magda. I'm afraid I must, Leader. We would die with you. When we use it. Well, it goes without saying. If, if you are going to die here, Leader, my wife and my children and I will die with you. I mean, that goes without saying. Die here with you. All of us. Won't we, Magda? Die? Die here, in Berlin, in the bunker? Are you mad? Are you insane? What are you talking about, die? I can't remember when I last said thank you to you, Magda. I hope I don't sound insincere now. Brilliant! Thank you! Come here! Come and look at the map! Die. Die! When General Venka is there. Venka? Yes, positioned exactly to save Berlin. Venka, General Venka. Who else? Positioned exactly to swoop on the Russians and inflict the bloodiest defeat ever. Those dear little children die. Are you both mad? No, how I love you both. <laughs> die. Mrs. Dunga, come here, take this out. No, come with me. I take it out personally. May I ask what is happening, leader? General Fenka is coming with the 12th Army to save Berlin. The, the bloodiest defeat yet for the Russians. Venka? Ah, uh, I want to send a telegram to General Venka, who is in charge of the 12th Army. Yes, leader. At once, leader. My dear Venka, I have chosen to confer upon you the honor of saving Berlin. Move at once towards the capital and against the Russians. I will be here to greet you personally. May I ask what is happening, leader? Uh, everything's all right. Venka is coming. May I ask what's happening, leader? Everything is all right. Venka is coming. Please, you ask what is happening. Uh, General Venka is coming with the 12th Army to save Berlin. What is happening, leader? It's perfectly simple. General Venka is coming with the 12th Army to save Berlin! Uh, I know the war is won, leader, but I... General Venka no... is coming with the 12th Army to save Berlin! What's going on? Going on? Are you mad? Are you insane? Are you out of your mind? What the hell do you think is going on? And if anybody else asks me, I'll have him taken outside and shot! Now be quiet! Daddy, darling, Daddy! Ah, leader, what you said earlier about Marshal Goering negotiating with the Allies, did you... Oh, did shut, you... Up, shut up, shut up, shut up!
How's the destruction program going? Why do you ask? Oh, I just like to know what's going on outside. Shvir, tell him to go south. He may accept it from you. Peter. Get out! Albert Speer is here to see you. Oh, good. C come in, Albert. Come in. How are you, Lido? Oh, it's good to see you. I'm, uh, I'm not very well for some reason. I seem to be shaking all the time, but I'm greatly cheered by seeing you, Albert. Tell me, why have you come? To say goodbye. Leader promised the children a holiday down here, didn't yes, he? Yes, we've come to have a holiday with Uncle. <laughs> Take them back at once. I'm not afraid of death. I welcome it. The last thing I begrudge you, Magda, is your death. But the children? No. I have always meant what I said, Josef. I think it's about time you started doing the same. You shan't. I have never said You naughty children. I haven't finished making this baby. Yeah. I'll slide on to Ava. Mama's boss is a new game to play. And we're not tired, are we, Holden? No. Look, it's in my case. I'll show you. Look, you take those. And I'll just cross the case. Oh. I'll go first. I will. Oh, I will. Thank you, ma'am. All right. How else could it be? And this is your dream, leader. It was mine, too. But you have created a world in which it is impossible. You create beauty, break new frontiers of sheer beauty, when you have given me orders to destroy even the few hovels left for the German people to live in. Destroy their roads, their bridges, their factories. Destroy the earth they stand upon. I have disobeyed your orders. I have destroyed only non-essentials. I have preserved, and if you don't have me shot here and now, I will continue to preserve everything that is necessary for the German people after your death and mine, leader. My name is Adolf! I have disobeyed your orders, leader, deliberately. And I'm proud to have done so because you are wrong. I've even thought of killing you myself. What stopped me, I don't know. I don't know how it is possible to continue to love a man one has learned to despise. Now, if you want to kill me, kill me. Because if you don't, I shall continue to save of Germany what I can. Leader. By all means, go and say goodbye to Eva. She'd appreciate that. Thank you for coming, Albert. Goodbye. Are you leaving? After I've said goodbye to Eva. Only I've received some alarming information. According to my guy lighters, the leader's destruction program, of which you are in charge, has not been fully implemented. You have a knack of being remarkably well informed. I suppose one should regard that as a form of talent. Mm. I feel it my duty to inform the leader. Don't bother, he knows. I've just told him. So sorry, Lila. So sorry.
five. One, two, three, four, five. I've got another two. I'm catching up. Oh. Six. Come on, darlings. Come on. Clean faces, clean hands, clean gym jams. Come on. Come on. Shh. Quietly now. Albert. My dear Albert. I knew you'd come to say goodbye. What makes you think that that's what I've come to say? What else is there to say? I, I don't believe I've ever seen you looking so happy. No, no, happy is not the word. Calm. Would you like some champagne? And a cake? No, thank you. Then you must hear my record. And you're very quiet here, I'm afraid. You mustn't wake them up. Isn't that lovely? Oh, it's all right in here. Addie won't know. Do you like one? No, thank you. I, I really must go. Listen, Josef told me he's going to die down here with the two of you. <laughs> the funny thing is, I didn't like Josef at first. I was young then. He says Magda is going to die too. Of course. Do have some cake. Josef said the children too. But they won't know anything about it. It's going to be done in their sleep, quite painless. Don't make me feel sad about it. What has happened to you, Eva? Don't make me feel sad about it, Albert. There's really no need. Well, after it's done, think how happy the children will be. With Joseph and Magda, me and Addy. And go on picnics together forever and ever. You do believe in an afterlife, don't you? You do believe in heaven? I don't know. I'm not sure. Jews go when they die. Nowhere, I suppose, poor things. I really must say goodbye now, Eva. I think it's wrong to have favourites, but my favourite's Holder. Look, look at the board. Look! Look, that's Holder's piece there. She has already killed 45,000 Jews and she's only seven. I think Holder will go a long way. What do you want? It really is time for another injection, leader. Oh, vitamins, vitamins. Why don't you go and throw your pills at the rations? You for really else? must understand. Must? You must, must understand that if you cut yourself off from your medicine now, you'll be sorry. Mm. I was born sorry. Get out! These are the prescriptions for his injections. And pills, 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 pills. If he lives long enough to get through them, that's up to you now. This is poison. No, oh, don't worry, he doesn't know. Doesn't know? We all need poison of one kind or another, that's his. when the time comes. Yes. Yes, the leader will give me strength. The leader will give us all strength. It's just that the children wouldn't understand that I can't let them grow up in a Germany that is bereft of National Socialism and the leader. It would be immoral. But how can you explain that to children? Oh, give me your strength, leader. I need your strength. 
I want you to uh, read a telegram from Goering. Ah, uh, well, you read it for me, will you? I, I don't feel like that reading. My leader, in view of your decision to remain in the fortress of Berlin, do you agree that I take over at once the total leadership of the Reich? with full freedom of action at home and abroad as your deputy in accordance with your decree of June the 29th, 1941. If I receive no reply by 10 o'clock tonight, I shall take it for granted that you have lost your freedom of action and shall consider the conditions of your decree as fulfilled and shall act for the best interests of our country and our people. You know what I feel for you, and this is the gravest hour of my life. Words fail me to express myself. May God protect you and speed you quickly here, in spite of all, your loyal Herman Goering. Well, 10 o'clock. Do you know what time it is now, leader? If that isn't an ultimatum, I've never read one. I see it. See, a very interesting. So, the third right has a new. <laughs> If he lives long enough to give another one, you hear that? You will all take your orders from a drug addict. Do you think I didn't know? I've known all along. I chose to ignore it because I thought he loved Germany. I even thought he loved me, which proves conclusively that I am out of my mind. That is why I am no longer your leader. Why you will now take your orders from a man who is sane? What does it matter that he is a drug addict if he is sane? What does it matter that he is an alcoholic so long as he's sane? What does it matter that he's a sexual pervert so long as he is sane? I have known all along the Goering as if he were not versatile enough already as a raving trailer. I didn't mind. I didn't mind. I didn't mind that his ambition was to be the first lady of Germany. What I didn't realize was that he wanted to be the first man as well. Well, he didn't know you will obey him while he paints his toenails. You will obey him while he drenches his obscene body in perfume. You will obey him. Just do not ask him to give you an order while he's putting on his lipstick because it might smudge and he will be angry with you and he played with little boys. You think I didn't know? There is no end to his talent. The man is as acrobatic as only the entirely spineless can be. He'll twist himself into any shape you like, or any shape the enemies of the German race will dictate to your new leader. My last wish is that you shall all obey the orders of Herman Goring when I go and kill myself. Everything is at an end. Leader, I beg you. You really need it. Get out. Come on. You too. Come on, get out. Get out and save your skins while there's time. Most precious, precious skins. Skin is so precious. Please, let me give you an injection, please. Did you hear what I said? Get out of here while there's time. You know what will happen if the Russians get you? What they do? To all women. Now go, on, please, please. Go! On. You oh, two, go on, get out of here all this time. Is that an order, leader? I'm not the leader anymore. Are you deaf as well as mad? I don't give orders anymore. Ask Herman Gurry. He's the leader now. No. I shall stay here with you, leader. So will I, leader. Why do you keep trying to send me away? You know I'll never go. Leader. Oh, 
No, I want you to let Dr. Stumpfegger give you an injection. Oh, oh, vitamins, vitamins. What do you use a vitamin to a dead man? They are not vitamins. Oh, look, Stumpfegger, look, I'm very busy. I'm doing something or other. No, no, Stumpfegger, Stumpfegger. Have you got something for a stomachache? Yes, this. And it isn't vitamins. It has a vitamin base, but essentially it's an opiate drug. Drugs, Obi, what you're talking about. I've got a stomachache. You are addicted to a hard drug. You have been for years. Morel was putting you to sleep and waking you up. You are now going through early withdrawal symptoms. I have never wanted to do anything less in my life, but please let me give you an injection. Please. You need this hideous stuff or your agony will be unspeakable. Where did it go wrong? Yes! Ah! Ha <laughs> ha! My dear little Helmut, what can I do for you, my dog? Go away, Helmut! We're busy! Nonsense, nonsense! What can I do for you, Helmut? Anything you like. Just ask, Uncle. Mummy's getting worse. She'd like to see Daddy. <sighs> go to her, Yosef. Go to my dog. What a strapping lad you're becoming. I bet you do well in the Hitler Youth. Is what true? Hmm? That we're all going to die here in Berlin. Die? Die? What are you talking about, eh? Who's been telling you such nonsense? I thought I heard Daddy tell you that. Hmm? And Mummy. And us. Absolute nonsense. Just a silly joke. Die? When the war is almost won? Are we winning, then? But of course we're winning. We can't help winning. What else? We can't help winning. It's all written there in the stars themselves, and they never lie. Come here. I'll show you on the map. Yes? The military conference leader. A conference can wait. No, wait a minute. Send them in. This may be of interest to them. Gentlemen, uh, come in, please. That is where we are. Come on. Get a move on. That is where we are. Heard in, right? Now, the Russians are there, and there, and there. And imagine that very soon they will be up there and coming down here. And they won't. Well, they wouldn't get past Blondie for a start, would they? Blondie being without question the most intelligent general I've got, apart from you, Helmut. Now, look where the Americans are, Helmut. There, and there, and the British are there, and the French whom I conquered in 1940, but for some reason seem mysteriously to have survived since then, are uh, there. Now, if you were me, Helmut, what would you do? Um, you haven't told me where our armies are, Uncle. A very perceptive question. Where, indeed? It seems to be a secret that's being kept from me, Helmut. However, between you and me, a little bird tells me that General Venka and the 12th Army are down here. Oh, good. That's not very far away, is it, Uncle? The whole army. Oh, the best I've got. The very best. Now, what do you think they should do? Well, if they broke through the Russian lines there, we could all get out of Berlin, couldn't we? That's the first sensible thing I've heard in weeks. Splendid idea. Tell me more. Well, if they turn left, went straight up, turn left again, that would bring us behind the Americans, wouldn't it? And we could smash them to bits, couldn't we? Out of the mouth of babes and sucklings. I suppose we'll have to have a bit of a rest because it'd be getting very late and I have to go to bed or sometimes Mummy gets sick. The next morning, we could creep up behind the British and spend the morning dealing with them. Then, after lunch, if the French haven't gone from there, we could spend the morning afternoon banging them on the heads. You hear, gentlemen? The war is won. If I may say so, leader, to be serious for a moment. No, you may not say so! And I have never heard anything more serious in my life! Certainly enough from you, Krebs! God bless you, Helmut. You are a credit to the party, to the youth of Germany, to your father, and I suspect above all to your mother. Now, I'd like to give you a little present for being braver and cleverer than all the rest of my generals put together. This is my personal gold swastika. Now, run along, give it to your mummy, and tell her to look after it for you. Don't you grow up and give her this kiss for me. Thank you, Uncle. 
Well, now, gentlemen, we come to the mere details. Borman, who have you appointed as head of the Air Force instead of Goering? Nobody yet, leader. You mean to say that Germany has gone for three hours in the middle of a war without a head of the Air Force? I was awaiting your instruction. For three hours? I feel humbled by your patience. Is anyone here capable of being head of the Air Force? Hey? Eh? No, I thought not. But I'll tell you who's going to be the head of the Air Force. Rita von Crime is the only possible head of the Air Force. Of course, Leader, very good idea. Right? You all agree? Excellent. Yes, I'll send a telegram at once. No, no, no. I find myself curiously distrustful of telegrams. Tell von Crime to come here personally. In person. Yes, Leader. I read it then. How the hell can von Crime get here? Considering that General von Grime is now in total charge of the German Air Force, I imagine that he will very probably walk. Germany's generals are all mad. What a very profound observation. He's mad. You're mad. You're all mad! I certainly don't intend to die in Berlin. I do wish you'd undress, darling. Didn't I tell the German nation I would never take off my uniform until victory? How do you think I learned to live with rats? I think I must have hated you for a very long time. It's always been quite mutual, I assure you. Do you love me? I'm not sure. I don't think so. Does it matter? If you don't love me, why did you pick me? You could have had any woman in Germany. Almost any woman in the world. Of course, hating you makes it easier to kill the children. If they had been children of love, I don't think I could have done it. As it is, they are children of duty. I have always done my duty, however heavy. Ever since you became leader, you've been faithful to me. I've been trying to think why. You have been faithful to me, haven't you? Yes. Why? I'm a very busy man. I've been extremely busy these last few years. Haven't you noticed? Mm. Haven't had time for things like that. I think there's another reason. Hmm? Would you please stop thinking it's quite out of character? And what it is, is that you're frightened. Frightened? I'm not frightened of anything. At least nothing you will understand. No, no, I mean, I mean frightened of other women. I mean, since you became leader. Because if it didn't work with them, you, you couldn't trust them to keep quiet about it. You're thinking again, will you please stop it? I don't like it! <laughs> Do you know, when you get very excited, you dribble all down <laughs> <laughs> Stop it! Stop it! <laughs> I've always been jealous. I used to think it was all your other women. I think what I was really jealous of was that the leader loves you. The trouble is, he loves you too. I have always hated that. Will you take your clothes off? No. Will you marry me? Yes. Do, 
Do you really mean it? Will you marry me? Are you serious, Addy? Yes. Well, you, you, you can change your mind if you like. It's just that, that I do think it would make the end that bit more dignified. But you can change your mind. I have never changed my mind. You know that. I never have. Wait a minute, please. I must search you. Are you blind? General von Graham is severely injured, can't you see? Are you blind? Oh, no, Miss Reich. Sorry, Miss Reich. It's the same for everybody. The leader's personal orders. His orders? Then search us at once. I insist on being searched. Shall I wear white? Mm, do what? For our wedding. Shall I wear white for our wedding? Ah. Uh, I suppose so. I suppose so. Martin Gorman is here, leader. Oh, well, you better send him in. Oh, no, wait a minute. Uh, give me one minute. Tell him one minute. to wear white. You haven't been white for years. You will wear black. Bowman. Here. General von Grime has arrived, leader. The new head of the Air Force. I thought you'd want to see him at once. Oh, good, yes. Quite right, yes. Yes, send him in. Uh, I'm afraid he met with a mishap on the journey. Seems to have lost half a foot. He's in Stumpfeger's surgery. Dear me, which foot? Oh, that I couldn't say. Hmm. But uh, what I would like to say is that uh, if von Grime can uh, still get into Berlin, we can still get out. We? Uh, tell him I'll, I'll be with him in just one minute. You may wear a white carnage. Thank you, darling. How did that? Uh, my dear von Graham, I'm very sorry to uh, put you to so much trouble, but I really felt that I should congratulate you personally. On what, leader? On being the new head of the Air Force. I'm deeply honored. Please. Heil Hitler. Thank you. Heil Hitler. Oh, thank you, Heil. I come on behalf of German womanhood. Heil Hitler. Yes, well, you really needn't have trouble. To tell you that we love you and believe in you, and in the final victory that only you, Linda, could achieve. Did you, uh, did you pilot the plane yourself, Hannah? No. I stowed away in the tale to tell you that we trust you and love you and adore you. But I'm really oh, quite no, overwhelmed. I would follow oh, you anywhere. You I would do anything. Yes. Wherever you go, whatever yes. you do, I would trust you. Shut up! Uh, I beg your pardon. Just that I'm, I'm rather busy. Good day. Are you standing there? Do things! 
some time to persuade him to accept your invitation. This time tomorrow he'd have been in Switzerland. Ava! Ava! Ava, please! Our information leader is that the 12th Army no longer exists. We do not know whether or not General Venka is alive, but even if he is, he has no army. I'm sorry. Would anyone care to corroborate that? I'm afraid so, leader. Are you mad? I'm just a simple soldier, leader. Simple, yes, soldier, no. Borman. Yes, leader. I want to know where Venka is, and since my military staff are the same incurable imbeciles they always were, perhaps a politician such as yourself could find out for me. At once, leader. I beg you, leader, leave Berlin. Berlin is lost. While you're alive, Germany is not. That is the military situation. Oh, don't talk to me about military situations. They're quite irrelevant. In fact, there is no such thing as a military situation. It is not for me to initiate you into the mysteries of the gods and of the great god himself. You are not one of the chosen. I, unworthy as I am, I've been selected by my master himself to purge this earth of self. If you would excuse me for a moment. I do believe he's gone to pray. What do you think? BBC. That's the source. I don't think we can show it to him. Not now. I'm not even sure I dare show it to Borman. But doesn't he want him the dead? His way. Well, I mean, perhaps. But not like this. Have you still not decided where General Venker must be? I don't think it matters very much. Look. This is the death of Heinrich Himmler. It may be the death of the leader. It may even be the death of us all. But I have received no further instructions, so we proceed as normal. Ah, Martin, where is Venka? I'm afraid that something much more serious has occurred. Mm -hmm. I must tell you that you have been betrayed. Again? Heinrich Himmler. Your true Heinrich is suing for peace with the Allies on the basis of getting rid of you. I beg your pardon. I'm rather hard of hearing since that explosion last July. Himmler has been negotiating with the Allies through Count Bernadotte of Sweden. Tell you this, Reuters uh, through, through the BBC. <coughs> Reuters, BBC. As you say, it must be true. We must leave Berlin now. Oh yeah. You're very anxious to save your skin, aren't you, Martin? My only concern is for yours, leader. How interesting that I'm more interested in yours. I'm trying to work out how many lampshades it might make. So you heard it on the BBC, did you? Yes, leader. You heard on the BBC that Heinrich Himmler, my true, my beloved Heinrich, is negotiating with the Allies on the basis of getting rid of me. Have I got that right? That is correct, leader. 
BBC, now let me see, I'm, I'm getting rather old and rather forgetful. What does BBC stand for? Hmm? The British Broadcasting Corporation. Oh, yes, of course, British Broadcasting Corporation. Yosef. Yes, leader. As an expert in propaganda, Yosef, what would you, Yosef, do if you were in charge of the British Broadcasting Corporation at this moment and wished to demoralize me? As uh, head of propaganda and uh, head of the BBC, yes, on, yes, wishing to demoralize the one and only Adolf Hitler, I think I'd say, yes, I do believe I'd say that Heinrich Himmler was negotiating with the Allies. <laughs> Kill him. Kill him. Kill him now. I want his head. I want his blood. Blood, blood, everything is treason and treachery. I want him less head. I want his blood. Nothing has been spared me. It is the final humiliation, the final betrayal, the final treachery. It is the end of the war. It is the end of Germany. It is the end of Adolf Hitler. I have tried to cleanse the earth! I did everything! I... Exterminate the Jews! And the Slavs! The Gypsies, the Communists! Anyone who's in my way of bleeding a true and Aryan race fit for. Why didn't you lend me your strength that I needed it? But the snows of Russia. If you had done, the war would have been over by now, and I could have made the earth pleasing for you in your sight. Even now, at this. See how gentle your master is. There he is. Your master and mine. What are your instructions? Kill and die. Kill and then die. There you are, gentlemen. You heard his orders. Kill and die. Kill and die. Kill. Hey! Hey! Damn it, you! Now, flat the underground! There must be no way out for anyone! But leader! The underground railway! Flat the underground! There are thousands of innocent German civilians down there. It's the only shelter they have left. They'll all be drowned. Good, good. I will prefer their blood, but drowning will do. Kill gentlemen, blood! 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 Now kill a dragon of blood! We can't have enough of it! Blood! Oh! And my, my, my Heinrich Himmler! Oh yes! Yes, I have forgotten him! His blood will be particularly tasty to the gods! And I give him my own too! If my, my, my imbecilic doctors have not made my blood impure or fit, so I must burn like the Jews! Good day, gentlemen! It still isn't too late. You have no right to deprive the German people of your life. If you took a stand in the South, rallied the nation behind you, we could continue the struggle for months. And what should I say to the German nation? 
How can I now offer them honorable defeat when I have promised them nothing less than total victory? What words should I use to make them struggle on? Words? I will find the words for you. That is my duty as Minister of Enlightenment. Oh, it's too late. They've already been spoken. How can I now say to the German people I have nothing to offer you but blood, toil, tears, and sweat? No, I can't say that, can I? Formal permission to die here with you, leader. Permission refused. Ah, my dear Martin. Exactly on time, as always. On time? Uh, I always time you, didn't you know? Always have. Huh? Do come in. Close the door. Sit down. Now, the question is, who is going to succeed me as leader? I felt I should consult my two remaining number twos before deciding upon number one. Any suggestion? Why not Martin? Why not Josef? Well, Josef was indeed my first thought, but he's just asked permission to die. I have refused, of course, but the mere fact that he should ask suggests to me that he is not the right man to succeed me as leader. I think we need someone different from myself. Oh, by the way, Ma Marty, forgive my not asking you before, but have you come to ask for permission to die with me? Uh, I thought not. Would you like to be the new leader? Oh, I... No, I thought not. You could no more be number one than you could be number three, nor I could be number two. In any event, your face is not well enough known. No. It really is a most unmemorable face. That will probably be the saving of you. I have therefore decided to appoint you as party chancellor responsible for political continuity in the hope that your instinct for personal continuity will enable you to perform this task. You, Josef, I appoint as chancellor of the nation under the presidency of who? Permission Any to die? Other? Now, the new leader must have two attributes. He must be acceptable to the German nation as an honorable man, a man loyal to the cause. This narrows the choice to the Navy, which, unlike the Army and the Air Force, has never blamed its failures on me. The second attribute is a kind of self-effacing, small-mindedness that will enable him to negotiate an abject surrender while still considering himself to be a man of honor. That is to say, a man acceptable to the German nation and the enemies of the German nation. At this moment in my life, I found myself able to appreciate the paradox. I therefore appoint Grand Admiral Dernitz as president from the moment of my death. Any objections? No. No. Now, you are prepared to serve as party chancellor under Dernitz, are you, Bormann? Yes, Leader. If you say so, I'm deeply honored. Thank you. And you are prepared to serve as Chancellor of the Nation under Dönitz, are you, Josef? I have no objection to Dönitz as the new leader, since I have every intention of following my old one. Oh, Josef, why do you think I've appointed two chancellors when Germany probably won't even need one? I just want things to look right in my will, that's all. At this moment of my life, I need you, Joseph, more than ever to help to sustain what little sense of dignity I have left. Please, may I make you Chancellor of the nation in my will? Honored. Deeply honored. Permission to die? Granted. You may also like to know that I have granted the same permission to Ava to die as my wife. The funny thing is, I didn't even like her at first. Oh, it'll be so nice. All of us together again. Like it was. 
You can't even laugh either, can you? Eh? By my one and only God, I would like to kill you. But you are necessary. Bring me Vega 9 at once. Blood! 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 <laughs> Would it be in order to congratulate Ava? Of course, of course, of course, of course. Eva, come in here and be congratulated at once! What do you want? I I've come to marry the leader to a certain lady. My name is Wagner. Hands against the wall. Your best uniform, leader, laundered and pressed. Oh, thank you, Linda. Stumfeger. Leader. Cyanide. Will it work on dogs? Yes, I should think so. Yes, it's bound to. How long will it take? Leader, I'm not a vet. Vet? You think I'd let Blondie be touched by a vet? Vets for the Jews. I'm sorry, dear. I should think no more than a few seconds. Yes, well, she must die first. My love demands it. I was going to have her shot, but such beauty must die first. You must go with a good doctor. He's got something else for you. Don't worry, my love. Just that I want you waiting for me. Blondie, here. Here, Blondie. It's no use, Lily. You have to help me. Shall I take her, darling? Come on, Blondie. Come on, Blondie, old thing. Come and have some chocolates with Mummy. Come on. Come on, Blondie. Chockies. I hope this works. I want the bitch dead. Yes, leader. I do sit down. Yes, leader. Appointments book. Yes, leader. I wish to make an appointment with myself. I wonder where dogs go when they die. Nowhere, I suppose. I hope. And then the usual military conference at 0100 hours. Of course, you could always postpone your meeting with Arte Axman about the future of the Hitler Youth. Future? Of the Hitler Youth? The youth of Germany has no future. It has been betrayed as I have. What is that noise? In 1941, I ordered the extermination of all inferior races. Did I say dogs? Do you want history to accuse me of that? Find me a copy of that original order. You won't find dogs mentioned. Appointments book. Make an appointment which will be most convenient for all concerned and will cause the least personal inconvenience to anyone but myself. The death of Adolf Hitler. Make that the death of Adolf and Frau Hitler. If it will make you feel better, I will take a capsule myself. Oh, don't be a fool. It wasn't your fault, but... I can't stop shaking. 
of you. Give me another injection. You've only just had one. Well, give me another. But it's dangerous. It could kill you. I'm dead already. That's why I'm getting married. This is District Commissioner Walter Wagner, empowered to perform marriages. Uh, no relation, I'm afraid. I, I'm, I'm sorry, Lita. Are you ready, darling? <clears throat> Do you solemnly swear that you are of pure Aryan descent? I swear. Do you solemnly swear that you have no hereditary disease? I swear. My leader, do you take this woman to be your lawful wife? Ava Brown, do you take this man to be your lawful husband? I do. I now declare you man and wife. Would you, would you be so kind as to sign here, please? I suspect he doesn't realize how many Jews he'll have to deal with. He never solved that problem. He'll find out. That's the real war. And I could have helped him the fool. Mrs. Christian, did you find that leader order about the extermination of inferior races, March 8, 1941? I didn't believe it was ever written down, leader. <laughs> Of course it was written down. Everything I've ever said has been written down somehow by someone or other. Don't you remember me asking you to find it? Yes, Lita. I'll look. Linga! Uh, yes, Ebi? Uh, Frau Hitler? <laughs> How much champagne is there left? Dozens of grapes, Frau Hitler. Champagne for everyone, then. Champagne for everyone in the bunker! Uh, I'll swear it was never written down. Well, we'd better make sure. Um, if I filed an order to kill millions of Jews, I'd give you a reference number. What's the delay? Where is it? We're still looking, Leader. You don't happen to know what letter it was filed under, do you? Yes, if you were at that meeting, weren't you? What meeting, Leader? March 8th, 1941, the final solution to the Jewish problem. Yes, Leader. Can you remember who wrote it down? Well, I don't think anyone did. You just gave an order. Oh, that's about your mind! should stop now. I'm sure all tired. Let's have an early day. What's the matter, darling? All this time to find a piece of paper. It's absurd. It's late, Addy, and it is our wedding night. You haven't had your wedding present yet. What is it? Well, I've ordered it. What was that? My wedding present. Your brother-in-law. Tagline. We've looked. We've looked under F for final, S for solution, J for Jews, E for extermination, I for inferior, and R for races. Are you sure it was written down? You may remember that I have made an appointment with myself. It is going ominously close. If the order isn't found by then, it will be most unfortunate for all. 
sound sound. Well, don't worry, Lady. We'll make sure it's destroyed. Destroyed? Are you mad? Isn't that... It, it's the one thing that must be preserved at all costs! Do you want me to go down in history as a coward? Millions of dead Jews and nothing to show for it? If that order isn't found, people will think I'm trying to put it in writing. They will say I felt guilty. They will say I was ashamed of my great district achievement. If I didn't have the courage to put it in writing, it would make me seem little and evil. The frightened, frightened evil little man, evil little coward. Am I little? You're gonna destroy this one for the start. Am I frightened? Am I little? Am I evil? God, what you're doing to me? I started to shake again. Frightened me? Are you mad? Find it! What a perfect wedding night. Picnics forever. I'll be waiting after that. Where do you belong, darling? I'm just making up my last will and political testament. Oh, good. That won't take Oh, long. get out, Eva. Yes, darling. <clears throat> it is untrue that I or anyone else in Germany wanted war in 1939. Posterity cannot place the responsibility of this war on me. Come on. It was provoked exclusively by politicians who either came of Jewish stock or worked for our Jewish interests. <laughs> The German soldier has covered himself with honor. Further, I will not fall into the hands of an enemy who needs a new spectacle exhibited by the Jews to divert his hysterical masses. <coughs> I have therefore decided to remain here and choose death voluntarily. Although, <coughs> during the years of struggle, I believe that I could not undertake the responsibility of marriage. Now, before the end of my life, I have decided to take as my wife the woman who, after many years of friendship, came here of her own free will in order to share my fate. We choose to die rather than face the shame of overthrow or capitulation. It is our wish that our bodies be burnt immediately in the place where I have spent the greater part of my daily work during 12 years of service to my people, rats that they are. Shirt on, Eddie. Have you forgotten that I vowed to the German nation never to take off my uniform until the war was over? No, oh, Eddie. <laughs> <laughs> Satisfied. Lovely. 
Touch him! God! Come to bed, you're tired. It's quiet now, and the war's over. The war's Sleep, over? Sleep, my darling. The war's over? Can't even find a little piece of paper. What's a little piece of paper, Matty? You look so nice. It is the most important little piece of paper in the world. It is my place in history. Why don't you have it typed out again with the old date on it? it is, thank you. At this moment of my life, I recognize that even the best secretaries in the world can make a mistake. I shouldn't at this moment of history wish to see you punished for it. I will therefore redictate the leader order of March 8th, 1941. Yes, leader. Kill the Jews! Is that all? Isn't it enough? No, I'm, I mean, is that all? Aren't you is capable it? of taking down three wives? Yes, leader. Kill the Jews! I was just thinking about your place in history, leader. Don't you think it should be a little longer? Yeah, I'm sure I said more than that, didn't I? Yes, leader. I, the leader of the Third Reich, decree the final solution to the Jewish problem. Right? Right. They and all other inferior races. Now you're both taking this down. It's very, very important. Where was I? Inferior races. Must be purged from this earth. Yes. The leader or a leader, ready for you to sign. Oh, good, thank you. Do come in, thank you. Yes, very good. Very good, yes. Beautifully typed. Yes, even typing is a kind of art with its own perfection. In fact, it is so well done that I hate to quibble, but there is one thing. Yes. The date. Well, 8th of March, 1941. That's what you said, leader. I said? Yes, leader. You are a married woman, Mrs. Younger. Yes, sir. Is your marriage legal? Legal. If mine is. That's why I did it. Everything I have ever done has been legal. And now you wish me to put my signature for the last time in my life to a lie? Do you think I'm a liar? No, leader. Lies come in various thicknesses, you know, from flimsiness like this up to the mightiness of cardboard. Like that. But I do wish that destiny had granted me a secretary who knew what date it was. No, I don't wish to appear rude at this stage, but are you capable of taking down a short codicil to my will? Yes, Lady. Good. The paintings in the collection obtained by me through the course of years were never assembled for private purposes, but solely for the establishment of a gallery in my hometown of Linz. Have you got that right? Would you like me to read it back, leader? At your leisure, over the centuries. Look, now there, that is the art gallery. Do you like it, hmm? Yes, yes? leader. It's extraordinary how everyone seems to share Spear's affection for cardboard. Yeah. And I can't put my pictures in there. Can I, hmm? Yes. 
still impressed by so thick a lie. Hmm? And the rest is as substantial. There now. There, there. Rest now, my own. Sleep no more. What was it you wanted? Sign a piece of cardboard, hmm? Yes? But before I do, I want to ask you something. Can you see any sewers under? <laughs> no. No, there aren't any sewers under Lynn's poor Albert. I can never make him realize that beauty can be built only on sewers. No sewers, no rulers, no rats, no power, no power, no rulers, no rulers, no sewers, and no rats to rule them. What was it you want? Sign a piece of cardboard. Oh, yes, sign this very thin piece of cardboard. But before I do, I do think you should get the date right. I wouldn't like you to go down in history as a bad secretary. Just dated April 30th, 1945. Goodbye. Oh, Addy, you look lovely. You put your medal on quite right, too. People forget how brave you are. There are people waiting to say goodbye. Have you no manner? Now, wait a minute. I have to sign this first. April 30th, 1945. Here, read this. I appreciate this. Savor this before I sign it. There are people waiting to die. You must give them the leave. Look, I have created, I have built a rag that will last a thousand years. Can they wait five minutes while you appreciate the most important order I ever wrote? Yes, yes, of course. Yes, yes, you're quite right. Let them wait five minutes. Um. Now, what is it you want me to appreciate? Well, consider when this order was implemented, I was already fighting two wars, Russia and North Africa. I hadn't yet won either of them, nearly but not quite. So what do I do before victory on either front has been achieved? I open a, a third war within Germany itself. Oh, I think that was rather daring on my part, don't you? Yes, darling. Wh which war? Against the Jews! Oh, them. Look, has it never crossed your mind what is entailed in trying to exterminate an entire race? I had to allocate an army to it. Tens of thousands of men. Millions of tons of equipment that could have made the fact difference to the whole course of the war if I send them to Africa or Russia instead. Now, I, I think that's remarkable, don't you? Y yes, darling. Yeah. Why did you do it? Guess. Can't tell me. Just try, try again. Try. I'm, uh, I'm trying. No, I, I can't. Look, no, won't you even try again? You mean, you mean, you, you should have won the other two wars before you started killing the Jews? That's reason, reason. reason. Oh, Addy, you're shaking. Oh, stop! Do go on, please. Um, please. I, I, I don't know. Tell me, what's the answer? Rats. What? I said. Power. Because of power. And power.
power needs energy, and energy needs fuel. And hate is the only fuel of the breadless. The coziest nights of my life, lulled in a dark sewer with a belly full of fate. We must hate, you must hate. How can we hope to survive if we don't hate? It doesn't matter who we hate, so long as we hate. How can we hope that it's an honor you must hate? How can we hope to destroy ourselves if we don't hate? We must, we must destroy ourselves. We were born to destroy ourselves. That is man's one true wish to destroy himself and leave the world to rats. Rats, even now, even now I can feel them in the sewers of me, gnawing at my roots. Gobbling up and up and up, gnashing their way to their life in my death. Is it, is it their fault they're hungry? Is it their fault they're poor? Did they ask for sewers? Is it their fault I hate them? In the deepest depth of my cold dark soul, I have been comforted by rats, warm rats, bright eyed rats, soft, bright eyed rats, eyes are bright with flaming hate. Come. Come, my godless, you have invested in my head, have your reward. Now, eat my brain and rest at last in my empty skull. Just let me sign the certificate. Give me the pen. Give, give me the pen. Right. Oh, can I? Oh. Cause of death. Rat. Get You ready? Can't even don't give me that. Addy, Addy. Can't even destroy me. Now, darling. Wait! Wait for the second shot. <laughs>